Hello my friends and welcome to the metal shop. Today we are just going to wrap up a few small projects that I've had sitting around. And I've mentioned a couple of them before. Oh, if you look over here on top of the wife's car we'll see a little uh, preview of uh, upcoming projects. Ooh. Anyway, so today we are installing the rock hard fabrication it's just the harness bar, harness bar padding. Okay, this is what comes in the box. Just a length of noodle, you know, regular padding. But this is what, you know, this is a nice um, kind of a canvas type of material with Velcro on it that will match your factory padding reasonably well. I mean, this was, um, $55, so is it really worth it? Probably not. You could just buy this stuff is super cheap. You get it from, you know, Jags or Summit or wherever. And you could use the the wraps that I used previously, which is just the neoprene, um, kind of generic. That's about $25, so you could probably get, you know, $25 for a box of the wraps, and then you could buy these noodles for, these are a couple, three to four dollars a piece, whatever. So you could do it a little bit cheaper. Um, I like this. Honestly, the wraps with the neoprene, they're pretty difficult to apply. So, uh, just a couple of tips. Make sure that you have your harnesses where you want them, at the proper length that you want them. And I said this before, I think, when I installed the harness bar. Using the label is actually a pretty good guide. They, you know, they make it so that the label is, shows just like that. Um, and I lined it up with that and that, that proved to be the right length. Um, just because once you wrap this up with the padding, it's just, it's just going to make it difficult. You have to tear the whole thing apart if you want to make adjustments to the length um, of your harness, harnesses. So I, what I did was I decided to go through the openings in the seats. Uh, originally I did go through these straps here and they didn't, they didn't provide really a snug fit. I think these are for, like if you had a, if you were a super, an extra big guy, you know, like built like, you know, an NFL linebacker or something, you may need that extra. Um, I felt, I felt that straps um, would kept falling off the shoulders and they weren't going to provide adequate safety going up through these loops for me. I'm pretty average, like I said, six foot, 190 pound man. Um, and I like this better. And of course, if the wife or the kids riding here, they're much smaller than I am and that'll be great for them. Anyway, so I got the lengths where I wanted them and I very neatly, I ran the slack back around through and I tucked it down into the channel here, the seat between the vinyl and the seat. There's quite a bit of room in there and it tucked in there uh, very nicely. So again, this is not rocket science. We're gonna put this on. We're gonna wrap it with this. Um, I am going to, I'll show you this after, I'm going to put, when I put this on, I'm going to put some, some blue painter's tape, some of the low adhesive tape around it in a couple of spots here at the end, probably here on one side of the harness bar loop and then again on the other side in the same places. I did want to mention one thing, I alluded to this in the previous video, was I bought this padding kit directly from Rock Hard Fabrication. Okay, now I'm very happy with their products. Their harness bar is pretty much the only one on the market. It is a very well-built piece. I had mine powder coated. It goes on nicely. I would definitely recommend it. Now the padding is available from, as is the harness bar itself, is available from large retailers online. And my advice to you, buy, if you want this padding kit for your TJ, YJ, JK, JL, whatever, buy it from one of those big manufacturers that has it in stock. I bought this directly from Rock Hard and it didn't arrive for 22 days. And that was only because I harassed them. I called, I think three times. I sent an email and I called three times and I'm like, what's the deal? They have this in stock. They just didn't ship it. Their, ship, their customer service when it comes to shipping is it's awful. It's just honestly, it's terrible. I, you know, I had to call and give them a hard time before they finally shipped it. They promised they would, they didn't. I called again, I'm like, what is the deal? And then they finally shipped it and it took 22 days to get here. Now. To be perfectly honest, 
inside of that's 22 calendar days so there were three weekends in there so that's six days there was one holiday that's minus seven days so we are still that's 15 business days that's unacceptable in today's you know retail to take 15 business days to ship you an in-stock product so anyway off the soapbox buy this from one of their many uh retailers that sell it you know anyway so let's uh let's get this going here hang on all right so i put some blue painters tape i got the wide i think two inch um just to hold this bar in place i wouldn't recommend using duct tape or electrical tape i did this because this is going to be easily removed if i need to um and you could even reuse it say you had to make an adjustment out on the road out on the trail whatever you could peel this off and reuse it this is really it's not necessary at all this is just to make my life easier when it comes time to uh when i'm going to put this cover on which i'm going to do right now stand by all right so pretty simple stretch it over fits perfectly attach the velcro it's on and of course with the velcro you can leave the opening there where your harnesses go through now is this necessary no i mean it's it is for looks it's nice but are you going to carry passengers in the back you're going to have kids ride in the back because you're going to put any passengers in the back is absolutely necessary unless you want your kids <laughs> to knock their front teeth out on this hard steel bar when you're off-roading like i said so rear seat passengers i would you know you got it you have to do something here they're only getting uh you know the regular shoulder belts here in the back they don't have a harness so quick and easy and uh so let's stand by we got a couple more uh small projects here in the shop all right so project number two today in the metal shop is we we're replacing the hardtop seals for the yj and you ever wonder why your top leaks i wondered why mine leaked and that is because that is what i removed for seals and the hardtop that was literally everything that was on there you could add that all up and you might have 18 inches of seal <laughs> so yeah that's why it leaked so you can see there, you can see the remnants here of some of the old adhesive. Um, you need to thoroughly clean that off. I'm using, gonna use a razor blade and uh, maybe some Goo Gone and some isopropyl alcohol to prep the surface for the new seal. And they give you these nice strips of inch and a quarter uh, rubber, kind of closed cell foam. This is a nice, this is a nice piece. So there's some other brands out there, but you have to use adhesive, like from a tube, and I did not want to deal with that. This looks like um, 3M style tape on here. Anyway, they give you two big pieces of this inch and a quarter wide to go, obviously, from here down to the corner on both sides. They give you this little nifty thing, which everything I've read said this thing stinks. This little punch to cut the holes, it's got a sharpened edge on it um we'll see i don't know what i'm gonna cut the holes with and they give you this three quarter inch they call it d shaped sorry there's no light in here i'm in the new garage you know there's no electricity out here they give you this d shaped product here for it goes along the top edge here and they tell you there's a kind of a foam here already it's in that channel. They say, do not remove this. This is like an additional seal that they want to go right over the top of this. Okay, fine. And this, I should mention this foam seal doesn't go, it's short on the edges here by at least an inch on this side. And it was more like two inches on the other side. So I guess this will stick, you know, right on top and just provide that little bit of extra bit of Ceiling. So let's uh, let's get this cleaned here. This stuff here has to come off. This is like, as I said, it's ancient adhesive, probably the original, and it comes off like a powder. And you got to get rid of it because the new stuff it'll stick to it for a short time, and then it'll fall right off. And pressure fitting the top actually onto the Jeep would probably be the best thing. So doing this at the beginning of summer is probably not your probably not the best bet. Because I'm not putting the top on anytime soon. So anyway, 
I'm gonna scrape this off, clean it up, and we'll go from there. Stand by. All right, so I'm gonna start, you know, I'm not gonna put this down here like this. I'm gonna start way up here, tucked right into that corner as far as I can get, and then afterwards, I'll come around with a razor blade and cut off the excess. But we want to get as much sealing as possible. So you stick it down here. We might have to make a couple of relief cuts um, to turn that corner, but you don't want to, don't use two pieces. Don't cut it and make two pieces. You want to try and make that corner and just put a couple of slits in it um, to get that to stick around that corner. You make it two pieces, you're pretty much building in a ready-made leak. So I'll stand by, we'll get this going. Cool. Look at my knee. Nice. Great camera work. All right. So got one side done. I oriented the strip to flush with this edge here. They say this stuff tacks up more over time and gets even more adhesion. Um, anyway, I lined it up to this, to this outside edge here because if you look at the witness marks, even though this other stuff was much thinner, it was also angled to this oh, it's inside edge, the inside of the hard top. Um, went around the corner here and it bunched up and what I did was I cut it with a razor blade and my advice is uh, I tried to use the same razor blade that I previously scraped all the old adhesive off with and it was dull. And this stuff is actually uh, pretty rugged. So get yourself a fresh razor blade. You'll see a nice continuous loop there around the edge and I just cut off the slack there in the center. I'm going to cut uh, cut off the excess here with a scissor. Pair of scissors. I hate it when people say scissor. Pair of scissors. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to do the other side and then we will move on to that top header piece. Stand by. Just a couple more quick tips. This piece I put it up even further. I'm going to cut it on the inside and the outside just to really get up in that corner. I didn't like this one, just got that little bit of a gap. I mean, I just want this thing leaked. I want to get as much sealing as possible. Uh, they say do not stretch the foam, let it let it lay out. So, and just like when you're applying any kind of this double-sided tape, you want to peel off a little bit as you go and then adhere it. Just a couple more quick little tips here for you. All right, so we're moving on to this top portion. They say to clean this existing gasket with isopropyl alcohol just as before and I cleaned a little bit of channel here that doesn't have anything in it. I don't know. They say to stick it right over this existing gasket. Mine is pretty good. It's pretty full. It fills that little V channel. It's pretty good and springy. I just don't know if that's necessary. One other thing, if you remember, I just installed the uh, the, the strip, the, uh, the windshield channel on top of the windshield and I believe that's going to ride right on here. Um, like I said, I'm a novice. Maybe you guys, hopefully, you guys can hit me up in the comments here. Do you have to remove that windshield channel when it's time to install your hardtop or not? I mean, I guess I'll find out. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to know if I'm supposed to take that windshield channel off. I'm going to assume, especially since I'm double, doubling up on weather stripping, that that stuff has got to come off. So I get not rocket science. I'm just going to peel and stick as I go this nice rubber D channel right on top of that. Uh, other weather stripping. All right, let's give this a whirl. All right, so they say there's going to be extra of this D channel. That's all I had left, but they tell you to take the extra and fill up in here in the corners anyway. So it's stuck pretty good to the existing um, weather stripping. You know, we just trimmed it off. So I think what I'm going to do is I don't think I'm going to use the uh, die cut there. You know, these are oval slots. They're pretty good sized. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to cut a slit to shove those bolts through. I think that'll actually help in keeping the top sealed rather than, you know, punching a big hole in it. Or some guys say they use a drill. I'm just going to cut slits in there for now. And when I go to put the top on, uh, we'll see, end up seeing how we did. They do recommend that you put this thing, you flip it over completely on its the top on its top like a turtle mine's leaning up against the wall it made it a bit more difficult to get the top one because you cannot step on the glass good thing is i have it propped up on those uh wave boards there the little whatever those things are kickboards and i was able to tuck my feet underneath it there so project number two 
complete in the metal shop today other than cutting those slits so we'll hang standby and uh, we'll see uh, what's next cool all right so i just wanted to prove out that you don't need to drill holes i mean i would recommend punching this with an awl or cutting a slit in it making like an x i mean i just brought some of the hardware out here with me just to prove out what i was saying and, you know that slipped right through no problem and it's going to provide extra sealing around that hole versus you know taking away material there that you need every advantage that you can get um, to seal up the top of your jeep so there you go all right so i lied no more projects today uh, just a couple of wrap-up pieces save your extra little bits of weather stripping you never know when stuff like this will come in handy you know i save stuff like this I'm a kind of a pack rat, a little bit of a hoarder. I got some really good Velcro, all kinds of good stuff. Save it. So uh, this came in the mail today from Hot Rod Hardware, the division of Summit. I don't know if you guys get those those emails, what have you, for the freebies. You know, free this, free that. Well, I got one, and I finally decided to go ahead and take them up on it, take them up on the freebie. So we'll see what they send me, if I'm enrolled in some kind of club, if I get all kinds of junk mail, whatever. But uh, usually what happens is they're out of whatever you want. Like, oh, the freebie is it's free, but the, we're out of the Ford, we're out of the Chevy. This, do not bend, but it's bent. So yeah. Ah, whatever, it was free. We'll hang it up. Uh, last but not least, I, I, went, I did a little bit of a pick and pull at my friend's body shop. They had an old Jeep motor that they took out from a 98 I wanted to clean up the fuel rail and install it on my Jeep but this is not this will not work mine has um, a return style system this is a return less so mine doesn't it's anyway this won't work maybe the injectors will work I got a couple of other parts and some bolts and stuff there um, I got the thermostat housing I am changing my thermostat upcoming project that requires a 180 degree thermostat you guys in the know will probably be able to figure out exactly what uh, that project is and I picked this up sitting in the parts washer now this will work this was off that same Jeep intake manifold now I'm just going to port match this I'm going to gasket match this to the Edelbrock aluminum head I don't have one I'd like to get Oh, I would really like to get one. They're, they're pretty expensive. Um, we'll see. So anyway, but I'm going to, you know, just clean this out, make it nice, maybe have it powder coated, um, ceramic coated. Mine looks, the one on the Jeep looks, honestly looks like crap. Uh, you guys have seen it. Uh, maybe I'll go over there and just give you a quick, uh, we'll show you. Anyway, my longtime subscribers and viewers know how bad this looks. Someone, they painted this. I, honestly, I don't know what they used. Um, it's pretty gets pretty hot under here it looks. I mean, I think this is like a kid's art school project Like they painted it with like testers model paint or something But they painted the intake manifold and whatever silver paint is just flaking off here in huge pieces it Looks like crap. So anyway, I'm gonna port match that one Have it powder coated something really nice like a bronze ceramic coated heat coated It'll look awesome in here and I guess I'm gonna be cleaning up this set of fuel rails and there you see the return style there's two a send and a return I assume that's what this is um, to match my nice valve cover here my nice red valve cover and some of the jewelry that I have here under it like I said I'd love to do the Edelbrock head and maybe do the uh, the Borla headers and replace these Dynaflows which are they're fine but that's they're just cheap they're inexpensive and they're getting kind of rusty and and gnarly so anyway my friends uh, stand by just one second do my clothes out over here anyway so as always my friends I'd like to thank you for watching bearing with me for some of the small and tedious projects that we got done here today I really do appreciate your support of all my subscribers I'm really working hard to get to that 1000 I'm getting close to 700 I'm I don't know 660 670 something like that right now I do appreciate your support I'm committed to try and uh, make you know, one good quality automotive video a week that you like to watch. So please hit the like, please hit the subscribe, give me a share. As well as my friends, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.